Welcome to The E! Show with Neil Raven. Founded in 2013, the EHL has become the college placement leader on the East Coast. Sit back and learn more about the next step in your junior hockey career. Welcome to The E! Show, presented by the Penalty Box Foundation. The Foundation's mission centers around their daily motto, We Take Care of Our Own as they help out all of those within the hockey community who've experienced a catastrophic event. Learn more at PenaltyBoxFoundation.org. What's up? My name is Neil Raven, and this is episode number 92 of The E! Show. On this week's episode, we recap one of the best showcases in the history of the league. The weekly rundown features a look back at all the tremendous matchups that took place and highlights the impact on the EHL and EHLP power rankings. Continuing on with the E-Crew Fantasy Challenge, and it was a productive weekend for everyone as the gaps in the standings continued to contract. Last but not least, we preview the upcoming schedule and circle a number of games to tune into on Hockey TV. What's up, E-Crew? Are we all caught up on sleep from the showcase? Absolutely not, Neil. Everyone else? <laughs> I, I think I definitely am. I think a few of you heard about that from Monday. I definitely am caught up with my sleep. I am. It was a fun showcase, but I'm right back in it. Let's go. Like, I just totally forgot what it was like to walk out of a rink, like literally in the middle of the night, basically. I think we walked out of there a few nights close to 10, 30, 11 o'clock and then say to yourself, I have to be back inside this building in less than 12 hours. Like, it's been I, two I, years since we've all done this, guys. I, this I is, forgot uh, that feeling. <laughs> this is a marathon. The second day when my alarm went off, I my body was just like, no, this is not it. I My body felt like I was crying for me. Like, what are you doing to yourself? <laughs> but we have to have the same big smile on our face from the first game of the day to the last game of the day for 40-plus games that took place. It was an oh, yeah. unreal weekend. I mean, we're going to get into it the week, weekly rundown here in a second, but can we just talk for a second about how close the games were, all of them? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. God the amount of OTs and shootouts we saw was just, like, nuts. For the, the, the games, some of the, like, some of the blowouts – sorry, they're not to cut you off <laughs> – were, were close, like, at times. So, like, you look at the box score. Like, I know I had some games that I called that were 6-2 finals, 5-3 finals, but if you watched the – entirety of the broadcast of the game they were close for the majority of it and anthony what were you going to say for the ehl premier division i think they had 10, they had 10 games in the first two days six of the 10 games went beyond regulation either to overtime or a shootout wow i think that's a perfect transition into the weekly rundown it's time for the e-cruise weekly rundown the East Show Weekly Rundown is brought to you by the Junior Hockey Podcast, your home for junior hockey news, knowledge, and nonsense. Check them out at tjhpodcast.com. It's a perfect transition because we're going to start with the EHLP power rankings this week because of what Anthony just said. Like, we were, Excellent. like, I was so caught up in the first couple of days with this, how many schools were there. Like, it was, like, overwhelming. And then you look yeah. up and, and you notice what Anthony just pointed out, like, here, here's the first set of games that took place, right? 5-4 overtime, 2-1 shootout, 4-3 overtime, 1-0, 3-2 shootout, 3-2 overtime. Like, it was intense right from the get-go of the EHLP. So let's flash back so everyone knows where, where we were at going into the showcase. Going into the showcase, number one was the 87s, number two were the Railers, number three were the Lumberjacks, Number four were the Seahawks. Of course, we had all the games that took place in the showcase, and we had the Railers shutting out the Seahawks yesterday, 5 nothing. Who is the number one team in the EHLP? Oof, I mean, the Railers are unblemished still, right? 5-0. Right? and oh, They just hosted on the five-game bender, and uh, look at the goals for, goals against. That's always a big stat we always like. 14 goals for, three goals against in five games? So if we want to do quick math real quick, what's the starting <laughs> goaltenders goals against under one? Starting That's goaltenders insane. too. They, they've used a couple. Yeah, they've used a couple, right? Um, Xavier LaPierre uh, is 3-0-0 with a .71 goals against average and a 9.74 Ooh. save percentage. Cam Wickens is 2-0-0 with a .56 goals against average and a 9.76 save percentage. Like, the numbers are out of this world. They haven't given up a goal in three games. They haven't scored a lot, right? F right. Five was their, was their highest goal total of the year. 
because going into that, it was three, two, 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 right? So three, no. two, two, one, two, nothing, two, nothing, five, nothing. But without a doubt, they're number one right now. Interesting team. Very interesting team, though, for sure. But I feel like that's why I would give them uh, more credit to Neil is they're getting it done by the perfect coaching formula, the perfect hockey formula, right? Yep. Don't give up a lot. You're not scoring a lot, but you're not giving up a lot. So yes. you win those tight games, especially early on when everything is tight and guys are trying to figure out, uh, you know, chemistry with lines and coaches testing out certain players, seeing how their stamina is, who can you ride harder? Who do you have to ride a little less? So I would give the Railers more credit for this five and zero start because they're doing it on in all three areas, forwards, defense, and goaltending. And I'm not sure if this is homework for you, Anthony, but I'm going to give you an assignment. I want to know what the Railers record is like dating back to the end of last year like going into the playoffs, right? Because I don't think – I think going into the postseason, we thought that the Rangers were going to win that division and go to the finals. And then the Railers were the one that made the run, went all the way to the championship game against the 87s. They're probably as hot as any team has been dating back to last March. So there's a, a small – if you – you can call it a homework assignment for you, Anthony. <laughs> um, number two, well, the 87s – lost a couple times at the showcase i think that they're this is where it gets tough because we're going to have this same issue at the ehl level you yeah. know how how high up into the rankings can a team jump if they weren't in the rankings the week before i mean anthony you're the 87s man i think we can give you the uh <laughs> I'm talking, the floor here i'm talking about the warriors though the warriors are five and one are they number yeah. two? I was just going to say, they need to be mm. talked about in this. I remember I watched them. One of my like favorite games watching was the one that they had the last day. They were the first team to play, and they were disgusting, to say the least. And that's like a compliment, like an absolute compliment. They were good, disgusting. disgusting. Well, that's right. Oh, yeah. They were good so good. I good was sitting there breakfast, like watching them out the window, and I was like, this is just nuts. And I was like, granted, they were playing the Renegades, who I think – I think it was the night before they had played the abs if I remember yep. correctly. So they could have been a little bit tired, but at the same time, Valley was just on top of it. They looked great. Like they were just doing all the right things. And I'm like, this is an exciting team to watch. I'm like, for the fee, like that's an exciting team to watch. Well, here, here's the thing too. Like, yes, you could say that it was against the Renegades, but they also went up against Joey Jamison in goal. I said it on the broadcast because I was on the call for that game that like you have to work hard to score on Joey Jamison, you put him on any other team, he leads you to the championship. That's how good I think he is. And I think the Valley Junior Warriors have some really good players. McAllister Ward, the goal of the showcase. That was that game, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. That was the number one play, I think, right? Did we do that? Yep, yes. it was. There, were, there yeah. were so many. There were actually too many top goals to really pick a number. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> know, we were all texting each other. That one was, that was beautiful. Board. That was the you got, you got, Mc, you got McAllister Ward, you got Luke Denny, you got Noah Ludman. All three of them are exceptional offensive players. They can move the puck really well. They can dangle the puck. They can shoot. They can score. So Valley is a very good offensive team. I think kind of the opposite of the Railers Junior Hockey Club. And I was going to make the comparison to the Railers P team, to the Wizards EHL team, where they might not be scoring a lot of goals, but they're very strong in the back end and in goal where they can win those low scoring games. I like it. So yeah, I think wasn't that, Luke Denny, one of like the top players this week too. So that's, yeah. that's saying something about the team as well. So September yeah, we'll start of the month. We'll definitely yeah. talk about the wizards when we go back to the HL. Cause I got the pleasure of calling two out of their three <laughs> games and they so, look good. So here's the, here's the P power rankings question is we, th we all agree the warriors are in at five and one. Their only loss was to the 87s, but the mm -hmm. 87s lost three total games in the showcase. So I think that means Valley has to be two. Do you agree? But the yeah. loss wasn't a big one either. If you look at the scores, they four only three. lost four to three. They, they so fell behind, they, they fell behind so they didn't, three nothing they didn't and they nearly came back. <laughs> exactly. They didn't, they didn't just sit down and let it happen. They came back and fought for it. So like, I wouldn't call that a huge loss. Yeah. It's a big team to lose to, but a four to three like final is not a huge loss. So, Let's say we're at a consensus vote then. Sounds like. Uh, so Railers one, Warriors two, mm -hmm. who is three? <laughs> Vermont Lumberjacks? Vermont, five yeah, and I was, one. Geez, yeah. I was just saying that at the same time. 
They did. I will say though, they did go one, one in two at the showcase. So it wasn't like they were the best team. They weren't the worst team by any means. They, they lost to Walpole in overtime. That was probably, we keep talking about crazy games. That was the first night and Walpole scored with seven seconds left to tie the game and then won it yes. in overtime. Um, that was then, nuts. then they lost the little flyers in a shootout the next morning, bounced back with a win against the chiefs. And then they got shut out like everybody else does by the railers. Um, well, so else we're going to bring up too is the new Seahawks, the brand the new, new P team. Yes. They went two and one, they beat the 87s five, one, and then three, two over the little flyers. And that was, that was what we had last week for three and four, right? Three were the mm-hmm. lumberjacks, four were the Seahawks. Are we sticking with that? I, I, I'm okay if we stick with that. I don't, I think there's teams that a, a team like the little flyers could, could be receiving votes because they did have a very strong weekend. I think they won their first two games in a shootout. Like they were like, yep. Like I think almost every game went to overtime too. <laughs> like they, uh, well, they, I think both the flyers teams have been looking pretty solid. Like they, yeah, there's like, they lost like one or two games, but like as a whole, both teams are looking pretty good. Yeah. So listen, listen to the five games so far played by the Little Flyers P team. They lost on opening night. Anthony, you called this one at the 87. It's a wild seven to six game. They beat the Rangers one nothing in the showcase. They beat the Lumberjacks three two in a shootout. They beat the Wolves two one in the shootout, and they lost to the Seahawks three two. Talk about tight games every single time. <laughs> I, I think I think we go Railers one, Warriors two lumberjacks three seahawks four receiving votes little flyers okay the silence is the silence is confirming it silence is deafening in a good way those those in favor say aye aye i i think our executive producer behind the curtain has some uh (laughs) disagreements oh just by all means do chime in if you'd like to say something for votes not even a mention for the Express going three and zero, beating the eighty sevens and the Lumberjacks. I did just take a look; they went zero two to start, but yeah, four three nine one five one wins. Hmm. We just, we do need to point out they did come back and beat those Lumberjacks, right? Yeah. So yeah. so I would even then maybe say Walpole is in the top four. Ooh, sneaking in, but well, the, the Lumberjacks were pretty retreat. solid, but at the same time too, they were mm-hmm. at the mercy of having. A morning game and then a night game so like they kind of you could say they got a little bit screwed there but oh, here we go here we, ah! now we're all gonna come at my throat this for the is, showcase schedule this is third again. straight episode of the schedule hey league. hey that's lauren not me i'm not hey, starting I've, I've i talked to a lot of people this weekend and some people said that like that plays a factor in the way that teams play if they have a night oh, game sure. and then a morning game immediately the next day like that is a huge like that can really like mess with them it definitely so, does i'm not gonna discount that some teams had it go the other way. Well, when we talk about the EHL, I'll talk about one game that I thought it was going to go like that, and it didn't. But well, it's, it, this is where it gets tough, but it gets fun, right? Like, you know, yeah. Walpole had a perfect 3-0 and weekend. They probably need to go in at that point. It's a good point by Justin. The Seahawks are 4-2, and two, and their only losses are against the Railers. Twice they've been shut out so far. I, I let's backtrack. Let's go 87s Warriors Express Seahawks receiving votes. Little Flyers. I like that. And we could say Lumberjacks too. So now we're now we've given six teams a little bit of love. I like All right. it. Yeah. We're moving four places and then three receiving votes. That's perfect. Now get your seatbelt because the EHL is going to be a lot tougher. <laughs> yeah. I, I mentioned this probably. I ended up doing 12 broadcasts, all EHL, and I said, this is going to be a lot of hard work for myself and the rest of the E-crew when it comes to these power rankings. All five teams did some interesting things this weekend. Hey, Jefferson, at least you didn't have to stand in the penalty box for any games. I did it. Unfortunately, <laughs> I, I was on the blue rink the whole time. You were on the gray the rink. The warmer rink, the gray rink was freezing. Well, Anthony, in, in contrast to that, I will say, we love the Fidelity Bank Worcester Rice Center. Don't want to besmirch anything. But my angle was, you saw it, it was kind of tough. I do not like being at that long, you're at the other end of the ice, then when it goes all the way to the other end. And that net, I found out, is made of Kevlar. 
So that's a little hard to uh, see through, Is but it? you'll never get a puck to go through. Yeah. Well, well, that's something I'm used to because of Jersey Shore Arena, where they have uh, the, the black netting. Sometimes it can be tough to see through. I did call the Renegades Junior Warriors game in the blue rink, and gotcha. it was a little hard for me uh, to. Uh, I was getting mixed up with Luke Denny and Noah Ludman because they're both left-handed shots. And one, one player has the number 46. The other player has the number 48. <laughs> so just going by the Jersey numbers, it, it was tough to, uh, to tell who is who, but once they were playing on the, the near side closer to where our vantage point was, it was easier. Gotcha. So EHL, I think what stands out to me about the showcase is that, in years past, and this is coming from college coaches too, the the gap, if you will, between the top tier and the middle tier has been bigger than it was this year. Like I, I have never seen a showcase this competitive from start to finish. And like I have no idea who some of these teams are. And I know Justin wants me to ask the question, right? So I'll Favorite just segment. I'll, I'll just quickly say. <laughs> Who are the Lumberjacks? Who are the Spartans? Who's the league? Who, who are the Wolves? <laughs> who are the Who are the Warriors? Who are the Seahawks? Who are the Apple Corps? I, I, it's literally everybody, though. It's literally it, everybody. It is. It's and, crazy. And, and like going back to what the rankings were before the, the the showcase got started, we were we had Rangers one, 87s two, Wizards three, Railers four, Maryland five, and. The two points I have to bring up up until yesterday's game when the Seahawks beat the Railers, I, I felt pretty good about where I wanted to go, right? And and even yeah, the Wizards, the Seahawks, man, yeah, the, they... <laughs> the Wizards were a perfect five and zero. Oh, the Wizards were the last team in this league to lose a game on Sunday, and of course they lost it to the Railers, who got them uh, in, in the playoffs last year. They weren't able to get revenge there. So the question is, who who is the number one team in the EHL? Uh, I don't want to answer this first because I don't really know. <laughs> Anyone else want to take this? <laughs> uh, to, this is where I kind of brought it up in the EHLP side, and it's going to sound weird because they were outside the top five, weren't even receiving votes, but I think it has to be the Walpole Express. Yeah, they look pretty good. Josh Holmstrom likes what they have over there. I did get to do, and actually, speaking of that perfect time, Neil, I did the Express Railers game. And what a comeback that was. Worcester, Josh will tell you, was putting it to them. They were up 2 nothing for majority of that game. And then they scored three unanswered goals. Uh, Worcester took a, a major penalty with a couple of minutes left. Josh Grund made him pay, ripped the Worcester top shelf. It was a thing of beauty. And the I thought that game was going to go to OT. And I honestly wanted that to go to overtime. That was one of the better games I he had. He was a fun player to watch. Plus, that was their, the first goalie, game their goalie, goalie Bosher was like a solid in that Yes. Yeah, Bosher was very good, Varner. That's right. Yeah, that was the first game of the showcase. <laughs> first game of the showcase. Like, let's That's just, it. just start let, out. Let's just jump right into it. And they were only one and one going into the showcase. Only had played two games. They played more games in the showcase than they had played the entire season leading up to it. Yeah, that I mean, the Seahawks both came in at two games. So we really didn't know who we, either team was. And after this, Walpole was starting to figure out a little bit. Seahawks, I don't know. Like you said, another big <laughs> win against the Railers after the showcase. Um, they struggled at top. That was the Apple core game that I did that they lost six to two. Um, when Colby Walters had a hat trick and Lauren got to interview him after he was all jacked up and excited. Um, Walpole as an organization went a perfect six to in the showcase EHL EHLP combined. Oh, do they get a plaque for that? They should. Right. It's just, it's <laughs> just a banner. Clean it, sweep. It's just going to look weird when our number one ranked team in the league, I, and I, we're, we're going with it. I'm going to say, I think they have to be because they went a perfect three and all only team to do oh, that. Let's go red train. They, they are in fourth place in their division. Yeah. As we said, parody deal. It's, <laughs> it's, it's so weird. I mean, they've There's played, no they've played the fewest number of games, right? So when the game count, when the game count evens itself out, of course it will, it will, it will make it, it will make more sense. But at this point, they lost the opener, won nothing to the Seahawks. They've won four straight since. They're the number one ranked team. They have to be. They were the only team to win three games at the showcase at the EHL level. And again, like we talked about with the Railers P team, they're doing it the same way too. They have 12 goals scored and seven goals against. So they're not putting a whole heck of a lot of pucks in the net, but they're not seeing a lot go past them either. So tough way to win, but they're getting done. 
honestly, Neil, I think you could just put the entire East Division in the power rankings, <laughs> and I, I would not disagree with that because I, I mentioned it in the recap. This division is stacked. You have the East Coast Wizards right now. They're five and one. You got the Walpole Express. They're moving up with the the four and one record. They had a perfect showcase. Then then you have the Valley Junior Warriors. Didn't have the best showcase, but they're still a very good team. I still think they're for real. And then you got the Boston Junior Rangers, where they have that uh, OP, that overpowered goalie tandem in Chris Jackson and Nathan <laughs> Mueller. So it, it's it's a gauntlet in there. There are so many good teams in that division, and it's tough to kind of parse them apart. And that's it's it's a good point because the Rangers were one and the Wizards were three, and all right, we got Walpole locked in at, at number one, the new number one team. The question is, where where do we go next with number two, right? The Rangers' two losses are against the Railers, which was outside of the showcase, and against the Little Flyers, which was in the showcase. The Wizards' only loss is against the Railers also. So do you put more stock in that extra loss that the, that the Rangers have against the Little Flyers, which is one less game technically played than the Wizards? The Railers. Well, I think, I think I, there's one team that we haven't mentioned yet, which I think ooh. some people might some people might think their record wouldn't be worth mentioning. But Team Maryland was pretty hot mm. going into it. They only had one loss, and it was against the 87s, which has been one of the top teams, and they only lost by one goal. And they ended up losing to the Seahawks, which we have seen are kind of making a name for themselves. Mm-hmm. And they only both those games they only lost by one. It's another one of those ones where like their losses aren't huge. They're only losing by one goal in both of those games. So I think they need to be talked about for sure. Like, I don't All think they right. can be left out of this. And the Wizards, the, as, the Wizards too, are like, as we just mentioned, are looking solid. They were totally undefeated coming into this. They only lost to, they lost to Worcester. And yeah. Yeah. Worcester's making a name for themselves too. So it's, I think the Wizards and Maryland definitely need to be contenders for this top five. This is Anthony's transitive property. <laughs> Anthony, because the, the, we need you. The Seahawks beat Maryland. Seahawks lost to the Apple Corps. Right. I, 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 That's what I'm saying. It's like they beat they, like the, they beat the Railers, but the Railers beat the Rangers and the Wizards. Yeah. The and the game that that's the thing. The Seahawks game against the Apple Corps. They did not. Look very good. Now they did have Griffin Narr in that. He it was his first start. He ended up getting pulled for uh, Nathaniel Hopkins, who seems to be taken over as the starter for, uh, from here on out. We'll see. Uh, I know Coach Santaboni likes him a lot. Um, but yeah, the Apple Corps were uh, the Apple Corps are going to score a lot of goals this year. And as we saw, Colin Callen and Colby Walters. So they made the Seahawks look bad, but they made the Rangers look uh, interesting too. I believe that was a five three win for the Rangers. Apple Corps had them on their heels for a while too. So, but when you look at the Wizards, like if you look at their like their record so far this season, they're not letting in a lot of goals. Their goaltending no. is solid. Their defense is helping them out too. Like, yeah, it's they're a good point, literally they their three guys record too. So, their record so far in what four, five or six games is three and two win, three and one win, three and one win, two and one win, three and two win, and a two one loss. Like. Yep that goaltending is solid, like rock solid. And I got to see like two of their goalies play this weekend because they had Alto in for a couple games, but then they also had, I believe it was either, it was either Gover or Asenso they had in that, in that loss. And like, these yeah, aren't big losses. Three. That's not a big loss. They're only like, they don't let a lot of goals in. So that is definitely like a team to look at because like sure. if your goaltending is that solid, you shouldn't have much to worry about. Yeah, I, I agree with the Wizards. But, Lauren, I also want to go back with Team Maryland. I, I think my only reservation is when you look at the, the teams that they did beat, they, they played the Connecticut Chiefs and then the Seacoast Spartans. So I think you have to take the strength of schedule into account. Their one loss came against the Seahawks, and while they're in last place, they're playing in the Thunderdome that is known as the East Division. <laughs> <laughs> the Thunderdome. Yeah, the Connecticut Chiefs, another team, though, who are they? They won 5-4 over Valley. The last game we had is the EHL. They won in overtime. You saw the uh, shootout was, winner I there from not, DeVito. Datsuki and Deke. I was not Deke. expecting that. <laughs> Me either. That Because they <laughs> lost some tough games. They got shut out a couple of times, and I was like, okay, looks like Valley might walk all over them. And then, nope. 
yeah, Valley's been pretty hot. And then when talking to the Chiefs at the end of that game, they're like, you got to talk to Divine. He's the dustiest player on the team. Like, He's so good. I, make sure you go watch I was on the bus watching that, that game. game. Oh, yeah. I was on I was on the bus watching that shootout, and when I saw him pull the Datsuki and Deke, I just shouted, ew. Like it, it was <laughs> it was so unexpected. It, it was gross, it was silky, it was so mischievous of him to pull off at such an unexpected time. Mm-hmm. And I mean that 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 alone should should earn props. That that was a terrific shootout goal. Yeah, it was. And honestly, when you can come off the turn, like the showcase saying you beat a team like that, that's probably going to light a fire under them. So they may be someone we need to pay attention to coming up. Yeah, could be. So, so we go back, back though. <laughs> we go back though. We have Walpole one. Who is number two? It's got to be the Wizards. Okay. I think. Okay. We all say Wizards. Who's number three? I think can the Rangers could slip possibly that far? in contention. How far yeah. do the Rangers fall? They won two of That's their three saying. games. We got to talk about well, the 87s mean, a little yes, bit too. Yes, you could talk about like the the strength of the schedule for Maryland, but like mm. at, at the same time too, like these are quote unquote like easy teams. Some people might say, but like <laughs> they still mm. did well. And some of these like teams that some people are kind of discounting, they've come back and beat some of the top teams in the showcase. So they're nobody to shake a stick at. So you can like, you, you could try to say, Oh, they had kind of an easier schedule, but at the same time, if you watch the showcase, anything could happen. And these like teams that are kind of lower in those standings, they can come back and be one of the first place teams. So I, I wouldn't discount. Lauren that wants Maryland at three. Yeah, she She's does. like pushing for a heart. Push, push, push. Anthony's shaking his head. I like watching head. them. I, I think they looked pretty solid. Anthony, who do you want at three? I, 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 would, I would keep the Boston Junior Rangers at three. Either them or, or maybe Valley. But... All right. So one vote for the Rangers, one vote for Maryland. Jeff, me, or you, <sighs> then me. And if we have to go to a tiebreaker, <laughs> we will. Okay. Um, that's, that's what I'm having a tough time going back and forth with right now is – I did – did I do all the Rangers games? Let's see, Valley. No, I did two out of the three. So I did a win and a loss. Didn't do the 5-1 win against Warriors. I don't know if they played – they did not play poor enough to drop them from one to four, I don't think. So I'm going to go Rangers three. Well, the vote has been submitted by, by Justin in our chat. So even if I say Maryland, uh-huh. if even if uh-huh. I say Maryland, it looks like we're going Rangers three. Um, yeah. but but that's good it's but large. so that gives us express one wizards to rangers three <laughs> sure east division <laughs> maryland four uh, move over north division <laughs> here comes the east in 2021 seriously though. new division it seriously is, though so maryland four and then five everyone pick here we go like it could be the Russell Avalanche. League goes it could five. be the lumberjacks it could be <laughs> it could be the railers it could be the Ducks, uh, 87s. I, I, who's number five? Like, I have no idea. <sighs> I if, I ha- if I had to. Back to you, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Episode over. Episode over. Um, <laughs> it's mm. so tough. It's so really? tough. because it, it changes week to week. We, we mentioned maybe not the toughest schedule for Maryland beating a team like Seacoast, but Seacoast swept the Lumberjacks two, two weekends ago, right? right. Like, it's. It's so hard to figure out who who is who early on in this year. Um, I think that any team we put into this fifth spot, uh, we really can't go wrong. I, yeah. I would say for this week, I'm going to say Railers. Okay. I'm, I'm with the Rails. I can get behind that, but I think at the very least, Ducks need to receive some votes. They're, yes. I think they're starting, yeah, to, I would, I think I they're starting to make a name for themselves. They don't, yep. their, their wins are pretty solid and their, their losses aren't terrible. They could be better, which is saying something, but <laughs> their, their wins are pretty good and their losses aren't that bad. So I think they at least need to receive some votes for sure. Okay. Agree, Receiving yeah. votes. We just named Spencer Quinn Player of the Month, didn't we? So Yes. Sense. So receiving votes, Ducks and six others. Is that what we're going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Ducks and the rest of the league. You're all right there. I would... we'll, we'll say receiving like votes, it. Ducks and <laughs> – oh, Man, this is like – you could say 87. Wait, the, the, pro, the, pro, the, pro, the, pro, the Protect Ducks only played two games. 
One was against the there one was go. against the New England Wolves, and the other one was hang on, I have the schedule right here. And the other one was a five-two loss to Walpole. So I I, I still think the Protect Junior Ducks need to. And, and just for the record, I'm not going to say the '87s deserve to receive votes either because I know that they lost to the New England Wolves. Yes, right. So say. they <laughs> so they need to prove themselves to get back into the power rankings or to receive votes. But the Protect Junior Ducks, no, I'm sorry, Lauren. I disagree with you. I, I don't think that their wins were too impressive just yet. Anthony they still have a lot to go against, Anthony just wants to go against Terry. We are, we are arguing over who is receiving votes right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hashtag our way battle. Can you tell the 87s and Protect have a little bit of animosity between the two organizations? Uh, so, so, Jeff, it comes down to us again. Um, are the Protect Ducks, this is, we're arguing for number six right now. Are they receiving votes? I say yes. I, I watched. That, put, I did, that puts me in the spot. <laughs> I did their. I did their eight three. I did their eight three victory, and they did look pretty damn good for the first time. That was actually the first time I had ever seen the Protect Junior Ducks live. Uh, right, last crazy. Year. Right, couldn't go see them. That's how weird it was too. All weekend long, I kept saying this is the first time that Protect is playing the New England Wolves. This is the first time that the Rangers are playing the Apple Corps in two years. Like, yeah, we think this is hard. Talk about being a coach when, I mean, some of these coaches have all stayed in the league. You know, I mean, Mike Lazazar is still at the Apple Corps. So, like, years ago, those teams were still coached by the same people. So, systems are somewhat similar, but players are different. So, yeah, uh, this that, I think that's why it was so tight. All these teams had no clue what the heck the other side was going to do. I will say that they are also receiving votes just to protect ourselves a little bit when a week from now, more craziness has happened and we need we need a – Move teams out and move teams in. Okay. I mean, Protect's I mean, got a tough schedule this week. They're going to play Team Maryland twice and then the 87's Wednesday. So I guess we'll see what they are after the end of this week, right? Yes. So um, I, I knew that the Power Rangers would dominate the weekly rundown this week, but they should have, right? <laughs> that just take the whole episode? Are we already in an hour? Oh. So with that, we'll hey, get you to... You said you wanted me to find my voice. I found it. I was, I was fighting for some of these teams Ooh. this time. I was paying attention to those games. I wasn't just wandering around. I was paying attention. The best part about it was that, like I said earlier in this podcast, and maybe this changes over the course of the year, when we went into every game this weekend, you could have said, you could have made a case for either side to win. And the game swung that quickly. We saw, I mean, just to recap a few more games, we saw Seacoast go up 3-0 on the Little Flyers and then lose 5-3. We saw the Apple Corps leading against the Warriors, and then they lose in the second half of that game. The, these games swung so quickly, and the mm-hmm. gaps from where the top is and the middle is and so on, it, it, they don't exist. There, there, yeah. is, there is no top right now. There really isn't. The top consists it's a of – a giant middle. Of really, the, the, the top slash middle is combined together with, like, you know, 13 or so teams with a few teams kind of – struggling behind them but i just to touch on a few of those teams just to make it a point like you could say the wolves are a team that's like struggling I, that's not a team i want to face in the playoffs right now when they when they have richards up front like he he is as dynamic a forward in this league and we i i saw the chiefs play you guys talked about the chiefs warriors game the, the chiefs have four losses right but their goal differential is only five so it's like one another one of those teams that has lost so many close games that a bounce here or there, and then maybe they're above 500. So, again, as Jeff pointed out, there are teams that have some gauntlet schedules this week. So one week from now, we'll clear out all five and do it all over again somehow. <laughs> yeah, maybe make things a little easier for us. Play some more games, play some tougher opponents. Everyone's getting a little more comfortable into the season. And, I mean, that's something I saw a lot too this week was, uh, in my games, was a decent amount of penalties, which you'd expect. <laughs> Like we said, a lot of these guys are familiar with the systems of the two side. A lot of these guys are really jacked up to see the, you know, 20 plus scouts at a time that were watching each game. So yeah, we'll see. I think the games will start to clean themselves up. Teams will really start to uh, figure things out as we keep going. And we got more games. A lot. Well, it seems like a lot of teams are playing like three or four games this week too, mm-hmm. Neil, which is, which is great. 
which is awesome. And it's a big reason why a lot of us went in different directions with our fantasy picks. So let's get to the <laughs> E-Crew Fantasy Challenge. It's time for the E-Crew Fantasy Challenge. And the E-Crew Fantasy Challenge is presented by Biosteel, the sports drink of the EHL. Use the promo code ESHOW, that's E-S-H-O-W, for 25% off when you check out at biosteel.com. So I think we all had productive weeks at the show nice to see you all from the top oh well. my oh, god man. oh my god you're point, to put it you're, in there you're you threw it at us so true. i had to throw it back true I, I if there was a number in front of the decimal that, that you were ahead of me because you're ahead of me by 0. 0.6 <laughs> i would be more oh. rattled but it's oh. only 0. 0.6 oh. <laughs> and, and these standings thing, same same argument from last week you're only like less like what less than two points ahead so true, true. same argument <laughs> true true fair we all had productive weeks though um, and just to recap the overall totals that we're at, Lauren is at 70.2. I am at 69.6. Anthony is at 55.4. And Jeff is at 50. So, Jeff, you. Into the 50s I go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Well, you started to kind of catch up a little bit. In little order bit. of what, what we finished last week, um, Lauren had the best week, which is what helped her jump in the first then myself, then Jeff, then Anthony. So to recap Anthony's points and then get his picks, um, I didn't mind your selections of Jerry Duckett and Tyler Penry. They just decided they didn't want to get your points during the showcase this week. So that means that wasn't (laughs) fair, Anthony. Everyone else in Vermont put up buckets of points, and I was feeling for you, buddy, when Penry just had – Schmidt went off with a five-point game, making us all regret not picking him. Every goal I called his his, teammates except for him. Oh, every goal was like, no, another one. Oh, yeah. I talked to him about that. I was like, were you just trying to give us all a hard time for not picking you? And he goes, yeah, I feel bad. I didn't do anything last week. (laughs) Yeah, I was there for that response. That was funny. LJG, Louis Joseph Gerdon, too, was kind of quiet, but still leads the league in points. So Ryan Brow got Anthony a goal, two assists, and a power play point. And then Jeff kind of touched on this earlier. Um, He only got one start out of Pat Alta, which was a win with 6.8 fantasy points. But what's interesting about the Wizards and something to watch, even at five and one, they've had six games and three goalies start two games apiece. So it's tough, right? Because you got we, we've seen Alto pick twice. He's gotten wins, but it's tough because you know he may only get one start because they're using every guy. So Anthony overall brought in 14.8 points last week, and he got the pick first this week. Who did you go with this week, Anthony? Okay, so here are my fantasy picks. I think to to start things off, I'm going to go with two newcomers. Starting off at forward, a Maryland native newcomer for Team Maryland, Farrell Din. And he went off in the showcase, total for four goals, three assists for seven points in the three games. And he picked up a hat trick against the Seahawks Hockey Club. They lost that game, but he looks really impressive offensively. I want to see what he's got for the divisional games coming up next. For defense, I'm going with Ryan Davies. Another newcomer has played three games all in the showcase, and he picked up a goal and two assists. So I think he's another player that will really help out with Ryan McGrath's squad. And for for goal, I have to go with the the returner, Nathan Mueller. 2-0 record, 9-23 save percentage in his first two games. And I think that number is only going to go up as he gets to play more games. For the utility pick, this one's a little, uh, th- this one could be considered a reach, <laughs> but I have a reason for it. I'm, I'm going to go with Everett Schneider. And mm. in his first seven games, he has only four points, two goals, two assists. But as someone who's watched their games, this is a player who is fast. This is a player who is generating scoring chances by the bucket loads. He's getting a lot of chances. He's using his speed in the transition. And I think to some college coaches, and they were talking about him. They were talking about players who they want to see for the college showcase. And one of the coaches said, oh, you know, I, I hope Neil allows a write-in option because I'm going to write in Ever Schneider. And for him, I think he's going to break out. I think the points are going to come. And I'm hedging my bet that it's happening this week. And that's why he's my utility pick. <laughs> I, I was going to ask you about that, Anthony, because he is a depth guy, and I was interested when I saw that, but I knew that you would tell us why you did. And Well, and, and call, you know. we told every team to submit nominations um, for the all-star team against the college programs, and 
I the 87s didn't put him in the initial nominations, but that college coach did say that same thing to me that Anthony just brought up that maybe he should be the guy. And then another thing to watch, and I know this is the second time that Mueller has been selected this year. Um, he's only played, this is only his second year. It feels like he's been with the Rangers for a while. He's yeah, already absolutely. at 23 career wins. I don't know if he has, if there's enough, and the parody doesn't help. I don't know if, if there's a way that he could catch Brendan Brawley's 51, but 13 wins away from, from cracking his way into the top 10. Maybe it's too early in the year to start a little bit of a milestone tracker, but I think he, hmm. he he's that type of guy that, especially when it comes to fantasy, you just lock him in. And if the team has multiple games, you know that he's going to win at least one for the Rangers. So those are Anthony's picks um, to recap the week that Jeff had. He had Cole Scott. I have not confirmed or denied. I don't, I don't know where, uh, <laughs> where Cole Scott was the second two days, Jeff. He may have been injured. Um, he, asking, got, yeah. he got an assist. Uh, Tyler Anastasi got you a goal to assist and a power play point. Uh, John mm-hmm. Werber got you a victory by way of a shutout, and he lost the game as well. So he still got you 10 points. And then Matt Pimentel got you three points to give you 19 overall. That's correct. And actually Pimentel went out late with that injury too. So I actually lost him for a chunk of time, but still happy to get some points up there, even with some injuries and absences. So uh, yeah, new week, new team. Let's go. <laughs> All yeah. right. Let's All hear right. it. So murderers row ready for this game. <laughs> I mean, I'd be, pretty dumb if i didn't pick our player of the month since he didn't get picked by uh anthony in front of me so spencer quinn come on down protect junior ducks uh sorry anthony i know they play the 87s next wednesday but gonna need a hattie from spencer at least maybe more uh, in that game we'll see and i know someone else picked jeremy connor i think that was neil so sorry but we're gonna need the spencer quinn show to uh have a couple episodes this week but quinn 14 points in six games eight goals six assists Four power play goals, one power play p- assist, and a game winner. Is that good? Correct answer is only yes. Uh, so let's see. And then Victor Melzahn. Believe this or not, guys, the Rangers' second leading point getter, Victor Melzahn, a defenseman, is the second leading point getter. I did not know that. Rangers right now. Jake Murphy is the leading point getter uh, with eight points, and then Melzahn right behind him with seven points, two goals, five assists uh and he looked pretty sturdy i had the call of uh two of their three games and i like what i see from him so we'll go with him on the back end in goal another i was toying between connor and jackson bernard i went with jackson bernard because this kid is just an absolute machine uh i know he's only three and three on the season don't look at his goals against the three four one the apple core play a very running gun style uh similar kind of like the lumberjacks did last year where they like to put up a lot of goals and they know Bernard's going to see a lot of shots and he's going to make a lot of saves. So they like to win those big high scoring affairs. Uh, but take a look at his save percentage right now, 940. So he's saving almost 95% of the pucks that are coming his way. And we get a lot of points for saves. So <laughs> got to go with Jackson Bernard this week. Hopefully he gets me 60 a game and then I'll be right. Hopefully up in uh, Lawrence Smith territory. And then last but certainly not least, Mr. Colin Callanan who had his four goals, eight assists, 12 points, uh, two goals on the power play, one power play assist. No game winners yet, but he did have the Hattie over the weekend. He had a big weekend. He had three goals against Valley and assists against the Seahawks and assists against the Rangers. So expecting big things and uh, on to the next victim of the E-Crew. For <laughs> that was me. I, I finished second last week thanks to uh, Kyle Patton had a goal, three assists, and a shorthanded point. Uh, James Mettler with two assists, both were on the power play. Uh, Stefan Kulhanek picked up the first bonus point of the year crew. Just making this knowledge, wow. putting this out there. I got the first Congrats. bonus Neil, point of the clap. year. Um, as he won a game against my Wizards, as Lauren likes to say, um, which was on Sunday. They are your team. Come on. Well, I didn't wear the jersey this week, first time in three weeks. Um, and Will Rosen, who was great going into the showcase, but clearly I picked the wrong Maryland forward, should have picked uh, Farrell instead. But I still have my picks for this week. Um, one player that really stood out, and you've heard his name mentioned a few times so far on this podcast, uh, was Josh Grund. 
in each of the first two showcase games, he had a goal and an assist. Um, the first game, uh, both of his points were on the power play, including one game winner. Jeff pointed that out. The second game, he had a power play assist included in his totals. The third game, they only beat Seacoast one nothing in a shootout, so no stats came from that game, but he had the shootout winner. So um, I'm going to lean on Grun this week. I was told by a few college coaches that he looked like the best player at the entire showcase, which is which is some pretty high praise. Um, on you, defense, That's awesome. on defense, Anthony has picked him once, um, so I'm hoping that I get better results than Anthony did, I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's Dominic Uh-oh. Metro um, on the point for the Valley Junior Warriors. They have a busy schedule as well coming up this week. And Jeff, if you didn't pick Jackson Bernard, I would have. So I got Jeremy Connor instead. Look at us. And, and I think it's it's funny, right? Because the and, and talking with Adam Hooley at the showcase, he's you know mentioning how the team is in kind of a, a tough spot right now. And it's like, okay, yes. You have an overall record of four, two, and one, but your losses are two to one to the Ducks, assets. two to one to the Wizards, two to one in overtime to the Wolf. Like, like these again, right it's a, a bounce here or there, and they're not losses, they're wins. And right, Jeremy Connor's got a one seven five goes against average and a nine thirty eight save percent. It's like he's been excellent. <laughs> like, this yeah. is they'll, they'll figure it out. They'll figure well, out the score. They this see. is. This is the first year, I think, with the 87s where goaltending has not been a weak point, but rather their strongest point. And Good point, Anthony. Th- there, there is one thing I do want to bring up. It was another thing that Adam Hooley said that something not just for the 87s, but also something that he's noticed around the league. There are a lot of players who can play a really good 200-foot game, not a lot of finishers. And I think that's <laughs> a big reason why – we're seeing a lot of teams that are winning games, even though they're not putting up goals by the bunches. Yeah, that's totally fair. That's and, a really good point too, Anthony. I mean, Kopak was very solid in his last couple of years and stuff, but with the Jack Lanes, the Tim DeBoards, I mean, they put a lot of pucks in the net. and So they're just having a little bit of a switch. But, you know, Coach Hooley and Coach Kiernan, they're very smart uh, men that have been in the game of hockey for a long time. I think they'll, they'll figure it out down in New Jersey for sure for scoring. And my utility is the captain of the Seahawks, Austin Pick. Speaking of scoring, the Seahawks kind of like this every year where they kind of grind out goals. Yeah. But I'm, I'm hoping that for, for Pick, the four games that they have scheduled, not an easy schedule, Warriors, Wolves, Avalanche, Rangers. I'm hoping he is the guy that sets the pace offensively for his team. So I can make up my point six point deficit and take over the lead again <laughs> from oh. Lauren. <laughs> Hey, so let's talk about how you got into the lead. Um, as Jeff kind of mentioned earlier, uh, Louis Joseph Gernon got you a goal and an assist for five points. Thomas Dempsey, a power play assist for three points. Uh, Nathan Mueller, probably a big reason why Anthony is picking him this week, picked up two <laughs> victories and got you 13.6 points. Yes. And Nick Graziano, who's just having a tremendous season for Team Maryland, uh, had a, two goals, including – one power play and one of them was a game winner. So he got you eight points. So a big 29.6 swing for you uh, has you in first place. And who do you got this week? I'm bringing back a couple of familiar faces in terms of people I picked or people like we've all picked. And I'm bringing back Brett Hanley from the Warriors for my forward. I had him before. He's been a bit quiet as of late, but I think with the next three games they have coming up in the Seahawks, the Spartans and the Rangers, I think it'll be fun to see him kind of get back out there. I'm, I'm looking to see him do some good things again and get back on the score sheet. And uh, on defense, I'm taking Ryan Brow, the Ducks. I think Anthony had him like this past week. So I'm hoping he can put up some points for me, especially since we were just talking about the Ducks in the power rankings for quite a while. And then Jack Boschert from Walpole. I got to interview him after the game and he, He's looking solid in net, so I'm hoping that continues, and I'm hoping they can stay on top with him in there and get me some solid points from him. And then for my utility, I chose Colby Walters. That's another guy I got to talk to at the start. Okay, so he was looking super solid, and I know a bunch of the coaches were pulling him after the game to kind of talk to him, trying to sway them over to their school. So clearly he's one to watch for sure. 
And I just want to point out with Bosher, he was the goal, the, the net, netminder in net for all three games that Walpole won. So touched on it earlier. They were the only team to, to win all three of their games at the showcase. Was, he yeah. was in net for all of them. So maybe we're all dumb and we let that goalie go to the very end. So we'll see. <laughs> uh, that could be my big point be. getter. There's a plethora oh, of pick man. from. So that will get us now to the what to watch for segment, which we're going to highlight some games to watch this weekend. Before we wrap things up, here's what to watch for this week in the E Show. What to watch for is presented by Hockey TV, the official streaming platform for your EHL and EHLP action through the 2021 2022 season. There are so many games set to take place at both levels that we could all, you know, all four of us could pick different games and not even come close to each other. So I'm going to start with Friday, which is tomorrow, October 8th, up at the ice den. Tyler Arago has the call for Avalanche home against the Express. I, I know the Avalanche have been kind of, they've been kind of quiet, right? They like, they, I say that, but they won both games that they had to play at the showcase, right? They beat the Chiefs, they beat the Rough Riders. And they're still at the top of the division, right? And Walpole's the new number one. How does Walpole respond to being number one? And I think that that's their first game of the week. That's a huge test for them right right, right after this. Somebody else want to go? I think the Warriors have a great – like, in, in general, their next three games are, like, going to be some fun ones to watch because we just put them, like – pretty decent in the power rankings and their next three games is the Seahawks who we talked about are like somehow making a name for themselves and like make us kind of rethink a lot of things and then they have a game right like day after that against the Spartans both those their next three games are all at home but I think Spartans have been not nobody to discount either so that's going to be interesting and then they cap it off with the Rangers so I think that's three pretty tough teams to kind of take on but I'm 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 holding out hope for them. I think I think they've looked pretty good. I think I think Ryan McGrath knows what he's doing over there. He's got a solid group, both like his EHL team and then the P teams look pretty good too. So I'm sure they'll do pretty well. But I think their EHL team definitely has some tough games ahead. But I'm I'm looking to see them do well. I think they'll I think they'll be okay. That's actually gonna be one of my first villain games for the week for the year, Neil. Uh Friday, Valley versus Seacoast. So I'll be there on the call for that. And looking forward to it. <laughs> was that was that your game to watch? Your game? <laughs> I was thinking about it, but honestly, I want to see what we were just talking about earlier: uh, Pro Tech versus Team Maryland. Let's see yeah. if Pro Tech. We've talked about both teams a lot, having uh, some good weekends and some in top five, some not in top five. Very heavily talked about both sides. So let's smash heads. Let's see who's the best of the best down <laughs> in the south. Pro Tech Maryland. Let's go. Let's you see it, Terry. Terry. You took yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth, Jefferson. That should be a right. great divisional matchup. Yeah. And yeah, we'll we'll get to see if Team Maryland or ProTech are for realsies this year. Realsies. And we'll, 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 yeah, we'll get a real good <laughs> idea of what these teams are made of. But I, I anticipate a terrific and, and I think it's a back to back. They play today and they play again tomorrow. So that, again, that should be a, a real fun back to back to watch. Yeah. So that's your your games to watch as well, Anthony. Yes. Okay. So there's 21 total games in the EHL between now and the next podcast. It's kind of interesting how the schedule, as I was telling, you know, Lauren, when, when we brought her in beginning of the year, the schedule every week is so, so weird. It's different. And, and then we have all these games leading up to next Wednesday. There is a game next Thursday, the 14th, which is the next release date for the podcast. But then after that, every team's next game is part of the next showcase. <laughs> It, I, I know there's a weekend in between, but it, it really does feel like we're going back to back weekends with back to back showcases. <laughs> Drink your bottle of steel, gang. Drink your bottle of steel. <laughs> hey, I got it right I think here. After this last one, I think I, I was jokingly referred to by someone as uh, Dr. Seuss for saying red train and blue train so much during the showcases, but <laughs> they're, I, think, I think they're looking pretty good. So I think those are some teams to watch as well. So. Were you saying that because the first showcase was hosted by the blue train and the second showcase is hosted by the red train? Hey, you could you could ho- you could be the host of the showcase and end up being really terrible. So it just kind of happened that they ended up being pretty good. So we'll see if Walpole holds up to that when they host. Yes. Well, and 
I'm going to say this again on next week's podcast, but for those that are listening closely now and they're planning to come to that Walpole showcase and are planning to come in particular on that Sunday, the 17th, the Patriots play that day also. People need to remember that it's tough to get to Robin Arena when the Patriots play. But I'll say it again next week. Um, what did Justin just say? <laughs> yes, I have some new... Friend? No, I have a new decoration <laughs> behind me, and no one noticed it until now. Did you see it now over my shoulder? Is that it's the trophy? Beautiful. That's yes, the EHL that, trophy. I got to hang out with it. It's great. It was yes, taken that, away from one BJR, one Rich DiCaprio. And... Yes. Well, it's funny because I asked the coaches multiple times to bring the trophies and i only had to ask two guys i had to ask rich to bring the ehl championship trophy and the ehlp regular season not sure why he still had that one the avalanche actually won that last year (laughs) and i asked i asked adam hooley to bring uh the ehl regular season championship and the ehlp champion playoff championship trophy but i got two of the four behind me so I need to put Those some were new fun to walk to the hotel with. They were like, Oh, you want a trophy? I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, my, name, my name is on it already. So I got to put the new names on it. That's why I took them back, got but it. that will do it for this, this week's podcast. Obviously a lot of big games coming up at both levels. And as we mentioned a few times, one week from now, we'll probably be resetting the power rankings completely again. And both the EHL and the EHLP. So enjoy the games this weekend, guys. Sounds good. See everyone there. Thanks for listening to The E! Show. Learn more at easternhockeyleague.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Also be sure to subscribe and get notified when next week's podcast is released.